What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Today I'm doing kind of a different video for, well, a major reason. Um, me and the wife are actually doing some home improvements to our living area by adding some hardwood floors. Of course, they're not legitimate hardwood floors, they're engineered hardwood floors, but they look pretty good all the same. Right now the house is kind of in a mess. We got some running to do to Lowe's. We got some different things that we have to get taken care of. So it's definitely a busy day for me. I don't have a lot of time to sit down, make a script and do all the editing and stuff, fancy stuff like that. So instead, I'm gonna try to sit down and just do a real quick run through of some of the stories I found in kind of a different style. Don't hate me for it. I'm sorry if it's not the normal, but hopefully you'll like it either way. I will give you a brief uh, idea or showing of what I am doing though, just so you kind of I don't know, see what the hell I'm doing. So let's check it out. Okay, so what we're actually doing here is we're adding acacia style engineered hardwood flooring uh, to the living room area. Now this is going to uh, go into the dining room. We're flooding here into the kitchen, uh, replacing all of this with hardwood or engineered hardwood is what it's called. Um, this is the acacia, acacia, however you say it, engineered hardwood. Um, this was all done today, so this is pretty cool, but we have some stuff that we have to go get, some different molding pieces and stuff at Lowe's before they close, so there's definitely some stuff we have to do there. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that we're doing, but um, they have to come back tomorrow, finish putting on all the molding. Also, they have to uh, swap out, looks like we had some scuffs here and here, so there is some stuff that they have to redo because this was done when they were moving the, uh, the stove or the dishwasher around. So they have to finish all that tomorrow. Also, this is going all the way into our entryway here. Uh, they didn't finish any of this area. They still have to rip all of this stuff out and, and extend the wood all the way over here. So um, that's what we're working on. Also on top of the improvements that we're doing up here, my wife does work third shift as a nurse. So she has to sleep during the day. She actually was supposed to work tonight, but they end up switching schedules last minute. But anyways, um, she had to sleep during the day, so we ended up taking the uh, a spare mattress that we had and we threw it in the studio downstairs in the basement, which has some soundproofing stuff and it was a little bit, a lot more quiet than what it would have been sleeping upstairs. So at the moment, my studio is non-functional. I can make it functional, but since I don't really have that much time, I'm not really gonna dive into it. So I'm gonna take a different route today. I'm gonna record the screen kind of briefly go over some of the stories and just one fell swoop, try to move through them really quick and just call it a wrap, get this edited and uploaded real quick and then continue on with what I need to do. Okay, again guys, I'm gonna run through this real quick. I'm just gonna share some stories that I found interesting to talk about for just a second and kind of go through them. So believe it or not, this is gonna save me a lot of time from not having to script and get everything set up and, and editing is gonna be a lot faster. So uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about today is uh, CCTV cameras sold on Amazon. Apparently this guy found a CCTV camera that he ordered to come pre-installed with malware. Now, now that's kind of shitty, but it came pre-installed with malware. Basically, he went in and there was something weird with the menu, so he actually opened up some developer tools and found an iframe that was loaded in the background that was invisible, and it was going to this brenz.pl website, uh, which he traced back to a malware distributing uh, URL that could essentially be used to, you know, either infiltrate the system, you know, spy on you, or even maybe set up a, a, a DDoS network or a botnet. So. Uh, be careful guys if you're buying any kind of CCTVs off Amazon and that could probably, and this is just an isolated incident, so this could probably spill over to other devices, which is weird because this is from a Sony uh, Chip HD, it's a Sony product, so, you know, it had to been a middleman somewhere, um, I, would, I would assume, but either way, be careful guys, uh, just something to, to look into. I don't even know how to be careful, honestly. I mean, if I'm looking for CCTVs, Amazon's a pretty trustworthy place, so... I don't even know how to be careful instead of ordering from a big box store that doesn't use a third party uh, individual selling it would probably be my recommendation. So uh, the second one is YouTube. They are actually launching a campaign to uh, allow users to broadcast live 360 degree video. Uh, that's pretty cool, I think. It basically is going to 
uh, allow them to just buy one of the cameras that are set up to work with YouTube and which so far is not a lot of them. They're actually working and they're, they're developing or have developed an API that allows cameras to be made to work with uh, the 360 YouTube video. So our broadcasting video. Uh, you can use this basically on any cell phone. It doesn't require any kind of special software. It's just a YouTube app. It's freaking hair or kind of have a cat. Uh, but anyways, you can just watch it in YouTube just like you would normally um, with any kind of cell phone. You could probably also do like a, a simulated VR type thing where you put it in like the Google the Google box if you wanted to. You don't have to, um, but that is definitely an option. Uh, I don't know. I didn't really see anything in here that's going to say that you could use it with a VR headset like the HTC Vive uh, or the uh, Oculus Rift or any number of the other ones. Uh, but either way, they are uh, releasing the API to basically allow more developers to create more cameras that would work with this. So hopefully they would become more affordable. And I can see this in the future too. If they have this YouTube API they release, um, phew, hair everywhere. If they have this YouTube, a YouTube API release and they release it to these manufacturers of the cameras, I could see that definitely becoming a thing where you would have multiple tiers of cameras available to you. Everything down from a shitty webcam quality that has like terrible resolution right all the way up to you know super thirty thousand dollar 360 degree uh videos all uploaded to youtube of course you're going to have to have a pretty good upload rate for some of those higher uh higher quality uploads so uh to be able to stream that i mean that's some that's some high resolution so something to look out for they give a little demonstration here with this really super awkward like party thing where there are a bunch of actors are pretending that they're partying and for some reason everybody's dancing so apparently whoever made this video has never actually went to a real party because people don't just stand around and dance everywhere, but you know, whatever. So anyway, it's kind of awkward. Uh, they had The Verge announce that they want to do their first 360 degree performance live on this Wednesday. Uh, today is, I'm filming this on the 18th, so it'll basically be tomorrow for you guys or in the future than whatever. But they want to do their first live show with a 360 degree camera. Uh, and they actually have a better example too. It's a lot more editing involved with theirs that has Michelle Obama. It looks like maybe an interview or something. I didn't really explore too much into it, but still looked a heck of a lot better than that stupid dance thing that they did on the other one. So um, this I thought was pretty cool. It's a drone that could basically uh, get the, uh, have the ability to hunt for landmines which is kind of a big deal in some, you know, some situations or some countries where there's been a lot of war going on, uh, you know, either present or in the past, and there's a lot of leftover mines. Uh, they're expensive to find, they're expensive to get rid of, and there's a lot of risk involved in doing so. So this is kind of a cool deal just because uh, they can basically take this drone, fly it overhead, it takes pictures, images of the, the land, and what it does is it actually detects small changes in the growth of like plant life around the area so um, they're saying that these landmines once they've been there for a while they affect the plant life in the, as far as maybe they're not as thick maybe they're a different color maybe they're dead all together just non-existent whatever it is it detects these uh, the, these minute changes and then it makes a map of where all of them are or a majority of them are hopefully it's all of them because that'd be a bad surprise if you didn't get them all so um, Anyways, it flies overhead, it makes a map, they can go through, they can find those, and they can dispose of those as needed uh, with whatever method that they're doing. So um, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, definitely a heck of a lot cheaper than the way they've been doing it, which you know I don't know about all the ways, but I do know that it's really expensive the way that they have been doing it. So next story up, uninstall QuickTimes for Windows. I don't know if anyone actually uses QuickTime for Windows anymore, but if you do, uninstall it. My er, Apple has officially discontinued any support for QuickTimes for window and, or Windows, and then they found two or a couple critical flaws in QuickTime that allows people to remotely execute code on your system from a website. That's right. They can take over your computer directly from a website just by displaying a QuickTime somehow, whatever. I'm sure there's a lot more to it. I did not read that much in depth to it. All I know is I, un I uninstalled QuickTime because I don't use it. Um, <clears throat> I know for some video applications, I've used it before, I'm trying to edit my iPhone videos. When I first initially started uh, my YouTube channel, I was recording everything on my iPhone and I needed the, the, the QuickTime codec, I think, and that's why I had it installed. 
um, but for whatever reason you need it, there are other options out there, including VLC player that can play .mov files or any kind of QuickTime related files. And really not a lot of websites use the QuickTime um, video format. Maybe Apple.com does, but seriously, I mean, just sacrifice one website for the security of your system, you know. Uh, so there's that. Uninstall QuickTime. Definitely, definitely something that you need to take a look at and get that off of your system. Next story. This one I kind of read through a little bit. It was kind of weird, but I thought it'd be worth mentioning. Uh, basically, Japan revealed plans for an invisible train. Now, this heading is kind of misleading. It's not completely invisible, but they do use some kind of like a, a projection from what's going on in the rear or whatever, some slightly reflective coating or something. Basically, the idea is to make this train, as you can see up here, they're going to make this train blend in more with the environment as it's going throughout the scenery. So people that are living ne near these trains won't have such an eyesore whenever they're going through, whether it's in the city, whether it's in you know the countries, whatever it is. The idea is to make the impact on the environment less, make it more in tune with the scenery, along with they said that they're making more improvements to the train itself. But the whole idea is the whole cloak that they're installing on this. So that's kind of interesting. And to me, it's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird thing to focus your energy on, but you know what? More power to you. So I'm not gonna hate them for it. It is what it is. Okay. This is a supposedly a desk, a desk sized turbine that has the ability to swallow up to the ability to power a small town's worth of homes or 10,000 homes. So basically what this does is it runs off of carbon monoxide or dioxide and it can use carbon dioxide to power this turbine just like a steam turbine would. The only difference is, of course, being powered differently, the only difference is, is that it's able to generate 50% efficiency versus the steam version that uses or that has about 45% efficiency. So this is kind of weird. I only briefly read over this. There's definitely some scientific uh, information here that you might want to read to. And I will link that in the description so you can read more if this interests you. But the point is, is that we hopefully can use carbon dioxide now to, you know, make power from it. So that's pretty cool. It uses something called a super critical carbon dioxide rather than just a regular carbon dioxide gas. Uh, something about how when it goes from liquid to a uh, or liquid to a gas, it has some kind of weird properties that makes it act better than you know something like steam would. So, however it does it, I will link it in the description if you want to read more. Either way, it's pretty cool. Can power a bunch of homes, and it's going to be really small. As you can see, this guy actually used a 3D printer to print off a model of what it would look like uh, in his theory. So, pretty cool. Next up, solar panels that can generate energy from raindrops. This is kind of a side story for me, but I definitely thought it was kind of interesting because the biggest thing, what they're talking about here in the article is that with solar panels, if it's rainy, if it's cloudy or whatever, they're not efficient. They're not getting the energy that they need from the sun to convert it to a usable energy for you. So that's a big down, downside to it. However, with this one, they're using some kind of a chemical reaction that basically would flip these solar cells over if it is raining and they use the electricity that's coming. Uh, I forgot what they called it. Uh... Okay, they use a thin layer of graphene which interacts with the positively charged ions found in raindrops. So on rainy days, the solar cells can be reversed with the graphene pointed upwards and they still produce energy. So that's pretty cool. That's kind of a big deal with, with, uh, with a lot of places that don't have sunshine all the time. You know, Kansas, for example, is where I am, does not have sunshine all the time. Cloud, wind, rain, whatever. This might be perfect. Totally not going to buy it, but it would be if it was there. Uh, let's see. This one I was kind of on the fence about talking about. I was looking at it a little bit, but Faraday, uh, the Faraday, can't, Faraday Future officially breaks ground on a one billion dollar factory to produce electronic cars. Now, the reason why I think this is cool, and I follow a lot of these things that redo that deal with renewable energy, but the way I, the reason why I think this thing is cool is because their plans here are to use a combination of a bunch of different renewable energy sources, such as solar, wind, turbines, etc., uh, in order to power this plant to be able to make electronic cars cheaper. So that's really cool. And on top of that, here in Nevada, or in Nevada, they're going to be adding, I think they said 5,000 jobs? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's 500 miles south of the Tesla's Gigafactory for batteries. 
Um, but let's see. Okay, about 4,500 jobs will be created in the 900 acre factory. That's crazy. One billion dollars for this factory. That's a lot of money. But if they can make cars cheap enough and they can sell them cheap enough, I'm sure that they're going to make all that money back and then some. And being in that area, that's where solar panels really start to take off because it's always freaking sunny. So perfect spot for it. Anyways, guys, again, I know this was a weird video, a weird style. I do apologize for it. Um, hopefully next week I'll be finished with all the construction stuff and things that we're doing to the house and we'll get back to the regular schedule program. Until then, make sure to like and subscribe to this video below. Follow me on Twitter at underscore bite my bits. And thank you for watching.